Hey everyone, welcome back to Diablo 4. What I want to do here, real quick, before we officially start the video, is show you uh, my current build for Necromancer, because I am pretty overpowered right now. Um, I'm level 48. I'm not saying other classes aren't overpowered, don't get me wrong. Some of them are. There's a couple that aren't that I've seen, but maybe it's just a, a bad player here and there. But, or someone experimenting, you know, not everyone, you know. Whatever. Anyways, my Necromancer build that I really, really enjoy. Um, I'm going to show you right now. We got, uh, starting here at the top. I, I was using Hemorrhage until, I don't know, um, yesterday. I decided to respec and, and basically focus on my Shadow or Darkness damage. So, I could have gone to Decompose where you channel a stream of what is it a stream of it doesn't even say it, it's just a weird channeled stream of it looks like dust or cloud or something and it just like it said it decomposes the flesh off of enemies and that it, it's cool because it, it makes uh you know piles of corpses right here let's see um Where's it at? Or is it just a base? Let's see. Um, yeah, forming a usable corpse with the flesh every two and a half seconds. Sounds nice, right? With corpse explosion and the ability to heal your minions off of the corpse. Sounds great. But, instead I went with Reap. Reap is uh, basically a melee attack, but it's, it's got a range. You still have to be right in front of the guy, like the melee range to hit someone. But the cleave swings this whole arc that you see me swinging the sight. So it it's very nice when it goes to hit other people. But um, back to this. It's, uh, you know, you deal 186 damage and then uh, hitting a enemy with reap increases your damage reduction by 15% for 2 seconds. Which, if you're sitting there spamming it, 2 seconds is never going to run out. So you're basically a little tankier. Um, I'm going to add in, uh, if it dies within, if an enemy dies within two seconds of being hit with my reap, I gain 30% attack speed. So if I'm spamming it on a group of enemies, if one dies, my attack rate's just going to go up, and then they just start dropping like flies. And then, uh, just instantly execute enemies that are below 5% health. Very nice, because I hate, I hate when they get so low, and then they kind of run over there and start casting again, and then you got to chase them down. That, that's a little annoying. Next, um, I had Blight, which is a darkness shadow spell, but um, I, I didn't really like it. It felt like it wasn't packing a punch like um, like other abilities could. But I, I haven't tried any of this. I haven't tried um, the blood build, and I haven't tried a bone build. I've been going darkness almost this whole playthrough, so I can't say if these are good or not, but I will say... Sever is amazing. Um, this, I'll show you, sends out a skeleton. He swings with his scythe in a circle, and then he comes back to you and swings in a circle again. And he goes right where your mouse is. Well, I'm out of actions here. So if you if you aim clear under steps like I did, he goes down and comes back. If you aim right here next to me, he goes right next to me and comes back. So if you're in melee range with someone, hitting them with reap and then you hit this well this guy's gonna hit him twice swing once come back swing again that's a lot of damage because you do 977 damage returns you does another 325 damage that's 12 1300 damage to the enemy quite a bit right yeah i agree and they they drop pretty damn quick um let's see uh yeah it damages enemies along its path which that's like yeah, you have to take that. You don't have a choice, but, I mean, that that just makes it so much nicer. Like, it's going to hurt everything on its way, even though they're not in the swing. It's going to hurt everything right there on the steps, even though I'm sending it clear down there. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, 2% increased damage for each minion you have. Well, I have the max amount of minions. Not true. You can have a additional minions if you have a... Uh, if you have an item that says, hey, you get two more majors, you know, or something. They, they do have items like that. I had one. 
Um, I, I used it for probably 15 levels or so, and then I got rid of it. I don't know if it was in a video or not, but there was a time I had five mages and, uh, was it five? Four footmen and five mages. So I, I had quite a bit of guys. But anyways, yeah, the more minions you have out there, the more this server is going to do damage. Moving down, right here is Corpse Explosion. Obviously, very overpowered. You already know about it. Um, the radius is increased by 15%. And then I was here. Deals 8% increased damage to enemies that are slowed, stunned, or vulnerable. And when I had Frost Mages, they were freezing a lot of different guys. And, um... The cool thing about that is I would get 8% increased damage against them. I thought, oh, that's cool. Well, you know, you got, what, 1,707 shadow damage over uh, 6 seconds is what I decided to do. So, like, instead of blowing this up for, what is it, 700 damage, I decided to go here. And instead of exploding, releases an additional... 1200 shadow damage over six seconds which creates deal seven 1707 shadow damage over six seconds that seems like a lot right well here you go it stacks so when you're fighting an elite or a boss or something and he's let's see he's standing here right he's standing right here in the middle of the battlefield and your your reapers they have a 15% chance to tear flesh off the enemy. And I, I have a couple abilities that allow me to give me a chance to tear flesh off the enemy. He's going to drop flesh. I'm going to corpse explode every single one of those. Instead of hitting him once for like 600 damage, he's taking 1700 damage over 6 seconds 5 times if I destroy 5 corpses. And he just, he just starts burning so fast. But... Then, you know, when you're fighting elites, they always move around a lot, so you got to be prepared that he's going to move out of there, and then you got to, you know, chase him down, and it's not as easy as it sounds, but it's still pretty friggin' overpowered. Um, I went here, 250 thorns. I don't know if I need that. It's spiked armor. I might refund that later. I'm not a big fan of it, because I, I play to where I try not to get hit. I'm not, like, standing there as a tank. You know, so I, I don't know if I like that. I want I might take it off and see how the class goes. Um, the Warrior Mastery increased the damage and life of your skeletal warriors. I feel like that's a given when, you know, you're, you're playing with all your minions and you're relying on your minions for a lot of your damage. 45% is damage increase is quite a bit. Here, um, on the curse skills, I don't have anything. There's no points here. Nothing. Um, on the Corpse and Macabre skills, obviously I went the Dark and Shadow route. Um, let's see. Damaging enemies with my Darkness skills, which are Reap and Sever. And Corpse Explosion is now a Darkness skill because I changed it, right? I changed it so that it releases Shadow damage. So as you can see, the tag on it is Corpse Darkness Corruption. That means it's a Darkness spell. So, darkness, darkness, darkness. My three, really only my three damage spells. I don't have anything else that I damage with, right? I'm purely shadow damage. So that means damaging enemies with darkness skills increases my movement speed by 15% by three seconds. So if I'm in combat, I'm basically moving 15% faster because I have to hit something, right? And I'm gonna hit him with a darkness skill. Darkness skills have up to a 15% chance to stun for 3 seconds. That's nice. 15% is pretty high for a random stun, in my opinion. And 3 seconds is a long time for a stun. And then, um, these two I haven't gone into yet because I don't have the points for it. But I'm probably going to max both of these out. Just, uh, just because I, I'm able to. When I take thorns off, I might go up in one of these. I'm not sure which one first. You see, when you damage enemies with darkness skills, you gain 2% increased shadow damage from you and your minions for 2 seconds. Stacked up 3 times. So, what, that's 9% more damage? No. 6% more damage. I don't know if that's a huge thing. Um, let's see, darkness skills deal 3% bonus damage to enemies who are slowed. 3% bonus damage to enemies who are stunned or immobilized. That would be nice, but 
the only stun that I really have is uh, this right here. 15% chance to stun. So, I still might go up in these just to go all in on shadow damage. I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, these two you definitely want if you're going a shadow damage build. Come down here. I've spent a lot of points here. Um, this, every five seconds, your, uh, your priest heal for your skeleton. You know, if all your skeletons are up and you use this, raise skeleton, a priest pops out. Heals all your minions. It's very nice. Heals them for an additional 60% of their max health every five seconds. Which... It's really nice in combat as long as they're not getting one shot. Oh, they're getting one shot? Go into this. Your minions cannot lose more than 30% of, of their max life from a single damage instance. That means they got to be hit at least four times. Right? 30, 60, 90, dead. They got to be hit four times. And in those four times, they're going to be getting healed every five seconds unless that... Unless the mob is just absolutely shredding them with quick attacks. So, they're not immune. I'll say they die quite a bit, but they last a lot longer if you go into death defense. Um, Army of the Dead. Um, I have, uh, is my ultimate ability. I cast it down. It, it starts to do a lot of damage. I use it as, a, like, my oh shit button. When all my minions are dead and there's not many, uh corpses on the ground like when I'm in a boss fight or something to raise my entire army again so I hit that because I spec into this right here army of the dead also raises your skeletal warriors and skeletal mages and this you just have to spec in on the way to get that upgrade um yeah they have a, all the skeletons that pop out of the ground and run and explode at an enemy they have a 15% chance to leave behind a corpse that's just good for me. More corpses on the ground means more corpse explosion, which means more shadow pool of damage. And it's it's like a it's a void zone. It's pretty damn big. Um, all right, let's see. Increase the damage and life of your golem by seventy five percent. That's really nice because usually he's the last one alive out of all these guys, and he rarely dies. I'll do some boss fights where he'll die multiple times in the fight because he's tanking a lot of the damage, but um, he rarely dies. Let's see, stand alone. Increases damage reduction by 18% and then an additional 2% for each minion. So I've got, how many minions do I have up? Four, five, six, seven minions. I don't think the golem counts as a minion. But regardless, seven minions is 14%, right? So 14, 18, uh, 20, 34% damage reduction. And then I also... What we have up here? It was, uh, where's it at? Where's my damage reduction up here? No. Ah, where's it at? Where's it at? It's somewhere, right? Where the hell is it? I don't know where the other damage reduction is. I know I have it. I went over it with you. Not that. Uh, I don't remember where it's at. I don't know. If you were putting paying attention you know oh this right here wasn't it no no I had where's it at oh my god I don't know I, there's so much stuff that it, it's kind of hard to keep track of but I know what I have I just don't know exactly where it's at on the talent tree <laughs> anyways that's uh that's the ultimate skills tree so um yeah, I, I really enjoy this. I, again, I haven't tried Blood Wave or Bone Storm. But I'm more than happy with the Army of the Dead. Really happy with it. Um, last thing on the tree is the key passive. I had this. Um, which increases your minion's attack speed by 15%. And if you have 7 minions, which I do, it's 30%. Which is quite a bit of attack speed. But, if... If I decided to go all shadow damage, and I did, I thought, well, let's try let's try this and see what this is. It's, uh, shadow damage infects enemies with shadow blight for two seconds. You and your minions deal 10% bonus damage to enemies with shadow blight. So if I hurt them with shadow damage, which is all, my, all of my attacks, they take an additional 10% damage from all my sources. And then every 10th attack an enemy receives from shadow damage from you or your minions, which 
I'm dealing shadow damage out the ass. Um, they take an additional 243 shadow damage. Which, you know, you're already getting 10% bonus. So you get the 10% bonus for 9 attacks. You hit them for that 10th attack, you get the 10% bonus plus 243 shadow damage. Which, if you're, if I'm, I'm swinging this, or using this, or even my corpse explosion, it's all AoE. I'm hitting everything, basically, at the same time for 10 attacks. You know, because they're all right in front of me and I'm hitting them all. But a lot of things don't survive for 10 attacks. It, it's really funny. It, they die so fast. But, yeah, I just wanted to go over my build with you. Um, I will show you real quick what my skeletons are. There's not really much change here. Reapers, you have to have reapers if you're using Corpse Explosion. I, I don't care what you're going to say. They have a 15% chance to carve the flesh off enemies forming a corpse. Don't use anything else because if you rely on Corpse Explosion, you want corpses on the ground. And the more corpses on the ground, the more damage you deal. And this is definitely what you need. Reapers with a 15% chance to carve flesh off the enemies. Um, skeletal mages. Um, I went shadow because obviously shadow damage is what I'm specializing in. Like my last ability, I told you every 10th shadow attack from my sources hits them for an additional 243% and they get a 10% bonus. So I went with shadow damage. Instead of defrost, um... Yeah, the, the frost damage, I thought, eh, you know, they freeze, that's cool, but it, it's not great. I could just be annihilating them rather than crowd controlling them. So, every fifth attack, they fire an additional shadow bolt. I think it's pretty good. I don't know. They, this one, they stun for 2.12 seconds. Not that big of a deal. Maybe if I went into uh, that one talent, my talent tree... Where's it at? This stuff right here. You know? And they, uh... They take increased damage if they're stunned. Maybe once I spec into those, I could go, um... With this on my Shadow Mages. But, I don't know. I, I like their secondary Shadow Bolt on their fifth attack. The Iron Golem. The Iron Golem, I used to use Tendrils. Which are the little arms that... You can cast on a skeletal corpse. They spread out. They grab enemies, stun them, and then pull them to the corpse. And then you can corpse explore the corpse. Sounds great, right? Well, you gotta have golem on your bar. To have a golem with you. And that's where tendrils was. So it's either tendrils or a golem. And the golem, if you read this, if you activate this. He becomes unstoppable and slams his fist into the ground, dealing 2,522 damage. That's basically what Tendorf does. Tendorf pulls him closer. That one stuns him in place and lets you focus them. That's great. And there's only like a, what, a 10, 10 second cooldown. So, that's why I'm using the Iron Golem. He, uh, his slam attack makes enemies vulnerable after 3 seconds. That's just a little bit of bonus damage that, um... You know, that I wouldn't have if I didn't have the golem. The blood golem, I'm not a big fan of. He feels too squishy for me. Yeah, he... he uh, his ability turns into... He sucks the life from everybody and heals himself. But I still think he's too squishy. The bone golem's pretty cool. I was using the bone golem for a long time. And... Um, I forget. I think I was using this. Yeah. Every time he takes up to 20% of his max life. Not in one hit. Just every time he endures 20% of his max life and damage, he drops a corpse. Which is nice for corpse explosion. But um, I've been rocking the iron golem right now. Like I said, you can change between bone and iron. It doesn't matter. Blood, he feels too squishy for me, but some people might like that. Also, I'm going to add the active ability for the bone uh, golem. He, this ability, it changes with each golem. The bone ability is uh, he taunts everything around him and they they start walking towards him so it's almost like tendrils you can you can select an area hit this ability he'll run over to the area and yell or scream or holler or whatever it is and everything kind of drifts to him for like two seconds or so and then they you know spread out again so it's just like tendrils basically and there's also a 10 second cooldown on that but anyways i just wanted to share my necromancer build this is level 48. I'm sure it's going to change by the time I get to max level. 
But, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.